It's my pleasure tonight to welcome you to our annual Bright Eyes event where we showcase our students and faculty and staff who have participated in the Wiregrass Reader publication. We went through a college merger last year, and one of the many good things about a merger is we get to share the best practices between the two colleges. One of the best practices that, that we share is the Wiregrass Reader. Mike Williams and his wife Jana, who was in trouble with us at that time, started the Wiregrass Reader at East Central Tech three years ago. So this is the fourth edition of the Wiregrass Reader. So this year we're, we're proud to be able to have this reading ceremony here on the Valdosta campus. We'll be doing a reading ceremony on the Ben Hill Earl campus tomorrow night for students from our northern region will be showcasing their work. Thank you all for being here tonight. We thank you for supporting our technical college. Um, one of the many things that this publication does for us, it shows that even though our focus certainly is technical education, workforce development, that we're, we're broader than that and that we also focus on general education and it's important to us that our students not only know how to do technical skills, but they also know how to communicate clearly with each other and that they, they use their minds for, for critical thinking and for creative thinking. And, and again, this document that that uh, we're sharing with you tonight certainly is a product of creative minds of the faculty and staff. So with that said, I want to turn the, the, the floor over to, to Michael and, and Catherine. And I, but I want to thank Michael and Catherine Masters for the work that they've done in producing the Wire Grace Reader this year. Y'all done another tremendous job. Especially another thing Good evening. To begin, I'd like to thank several people and groups of people who made this project and night possible. I'd like to begin by thanking members of the faculty and staff at Wiregrass Georgia Technical College who gave up a Friday morning to graciously judge these selections. Our number of submissions keep growing, but so does their support. We'd also like to thank the East Central Technical College and Vadasa Technical College Foundations and the Wiregrass Student Leadership Council, particularly Lisa Howell and Kelly Weatherington, and all of the helpers that are here tonight to help us serve this event, whose financial and physical contributions helped to make this possible. And we'd like to thank Angela Hobby and Christina Moore in the Public Relations Department for supporting us, helping to promote this journal and this ceremony. Also, please join me in thanking all of the dedicated people helping set up technology and refreshments for you tonight. I'd like to recognize the students and faculty of the Printing and Graphics Department for publishing this journal for us, particularly Courtney Parks, who is here tonight. He has worked incredibly hard on this every step of the way. Courtney, we couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> the purpose of this journal is to encourage an interest in writing and to promote literacy in our college and community. We feel that the best way to learn about English and grammar is through writing, but writing serves many more purposes than that. Writing encourages us to delve deep into our imaginations and to explore our innermost emotions and ideas. Writing is also a learning tool. Not only, does it inter not only does it reinforce grammar and sentence skills, but it also forces us to come to grips with our emotions. It is a form of therapy in which writers learn about themselves and wrestle with their thoughts. It also helps us to understand our surroundings and explore the Wiregrass region in which we live. The journal that came out of this project is entitled The Wiregrass Reader, Rural Voices from Home. And the works in this journal continue a trend of excellent writing from the South in general and Georgia in particular, which continues in the voices of our students and community members. These works reflect the timeless characteristics of our culture, a preoccupation with home and family, community, land, and our shared history. They explore our toughest problems and our deepest fears and they celebrate our greatest conquests. Many of these works grapple with death, depression, and illness, while others celebrate old family stories, loved ones, and laughter. They reflect a distinctively Southern way of life. These scenes unfold under the branches of longleaf pine trees, in cotton fields with crocker sacks, 
and along the beaches of Georgia's barrier islands. The photography in this year's journal comes exclusively from our students and faculty and brilliantly portrays the beauty of our region. The emotions are universal, but the voices are distinct. While other cultures share similar experiences, our triumphs and tragedies, loves and losses, addictions and redemptions are uniquely our own. At this time, we'd like to open the floor to uh, authors who wish to read excerpts of their works aloud. Um, and Marina, <laughs> Marina Almanza is uh, the one I picked to go first. Uh, let's give her a round of applause for coming up here. This is called Scared. I am driven, motivated, inspired, often crippled by fear. Failure is an option and success is scripted. If I fail at this life, it will be said. I always knew she would turn out like that. Should I succeed, it will be said. I always knew she could do it, so I'm afraid. The double standards, double talk, and hypocrisy that governs us stalk me like a shadow in an alley. How I felt has never mattered, only what others think. I carry around the pain like so many nickels and dimes while others poke fun at my insecurities. And why not? I'm afraid. Afraid to fail, afraid to succeed, afraid to be a woman, whoever she is. 